Hello, everybody. Welcome Hi, to our little Sandra. talk here. Hi, Jennifer. Great to see both of you. So honored to We're be in this thrilled. little talk. <laughs> We're thrilled here at Hope Living and Hope Beauty and Hope Residence to have both of you with us today. So before we get started, Sandra, beginning with you, what is your biggest takeaway been in this past year that you could share with us? My biggest takeaway, definitely, I was like, probably like everybody else, so surprised. And, uh, you know, I just realized I came here 22 years ago. And for me, Miami was always the place to be. And I feel I like was one of the forerunners before everybody else that saw this potential in Miami. And I guess this year has proven us that Miami is really the place to be. And, you know, I mean, from when we look back for where we were a year ago to now, it's just incredible because, I mean, the market has shifted so tremendously and we have become so popular that prices have definitely almost well in some areas almost doubled so and uh, it's just amazing what some unfortunately a lot of people had to go through harm in this situation but I think a lot of other people saw this as an opportunity and um, tried to reinvent themselves relocate and uh, find new hope and a different angle on life. Sandra thank you so much. And Jennifer Nicoli. Yes. First of all, I want to say it's such an honor to be here with such amazing women. First of all, April and to everyone at Hope Living, Hope Residences, and Hope Beauty Network, thank you for this platform that we can empower, enlighten, and really help others become their best version of themselves. I want to also thank my beautiful co-panelist, Sandra Fiorenza. I am honored to be your luxury real estate agent partner. And we have a lot of fun because we keep it fun while we keep ourselves healthy and vibrant. And for those that don't know me, I've been in the fitness and wellness industry as a coach for close to two decades, 20 years. You can visit my website, jennifernicoli.com. You can also visit my luxury real estate website at jnlvipre.com. And I'm here to serve all of you. And a little bit about myself before I pass the ball back over to you, April. I'm the author of 17 books. I'm very blessed to say that I've graced over 93 magazine covers in my, uh, since I started in 2003. And it all started from me just going out in faith that I could be the best woman I could be, best mom, best wife, and just the best modern day woman. And I've taken that passion now into luxury real estate, all my marketing mm -hmm. that I've learned how to do, serving other people. And it's been a lot of fun, especially when I get to do it with someone like Sandra and also with amazing family like Hope Living, Hope Residence, Hope Beauty Network, and we love everything with this beautiful global brand. So thank you. I'm honored to be here. Jennifer, I'm honored as well. <laughs> thank you for summarizing this so nicely. <laughs> Sandra, how about you? Tell us about your background. My background. So I came here, as mentioned earlier, 22 years ago from Germany. I was born and raised in Germany and uh, I grew up in Europe. I um, did a high school exchange here when I was 20 years, uh, sorry, 16 years old in California. And I think ever since that moment, I had it in the back of my head that eventually I would like to live in the United States. But life happens. I went to the university first in Switzerland and then in Germany. Uh, I studied business administration and actually had my own PR and marketing agency. In Germany, in Düsseldorf, um, I did, during my university studies, a lot of internship programs in different parts of uh, Europe. So I do speak five languages. And when I came here in 1998, I just made my decision that I do wanna, even though I had a fabulous career in Germany, uh, in Europe, I wanted to change my life and do live in the city of my dreams, but ha which happened to be Miami and it still is. So um, I feel truly Miami and, and I always make a point when people ask me, how long have you been here in this country? I'm like, no, I haven't been in this country. I've been in Miami. So I, I'm really a hardcore Miami. And, <laughs> and, uh, and again, it just fell by coincidence. I fell into real estate. I, I, I was here um, on a different kind of a job and a marketing assignment that um, allowed me to work here in the United States as well. And then I saw the opportunities in real estate. So um, I just went to real estate school and made my real estate license in a week and, and started this in 1998 very successfully. I started working uh, on developments um, 
primarily in South Point area. But uh, yeah, and from there on, I just took my my real estate on and kind of forgot about my my other consultation that I was doing in marketing. So this is, um, but and I have been, I was living on Fish Island for many years and that's where I led my business. And, and I moved to Cora Gables about uh, nine years ago. So I'm here now in Cora Gables. And the problem is we're having Cora Gables, as you can see, no internet. That's why I have to do this on my phone now and everything <laughs> broke down in the beginning. But um, no, I'm just kidding. It's a fabulous neighborhood. I did it for my kids. I have three kids, three teenagers. But I can't wait to move back to Fish Island, which I'm actually going to do in a couple of months. All good stuff, Sandra. Thank you so much. And uh, such a great partner for Hope Residents. So happy. This magazine has been my Bible ever since uh, I had it first time in my hand. I think like, I don't know, so many, so, so many years ago. Thank you very much. And thank you to both of you for such kind words on our brand and, and everything that we do here. We really appreciate that. Thank you. Jennifer, before we get started, you know, there's a great tie-in between overall wellness and, and business and really being your best every day, which we're very excited to talk about. Can you touch briefly, you've got a very interesting story of how you got into fitness and kind of the, the turning point that you were at in your life and how it really all started for you. Absolutely. It came from out of frustration. It wasn't like, oh, I'm going to be a bikini model and win a bunch of awards and crowns for being Miss Physique world, you know, diva. Uh, it wasn't that even like that. I was overweight. I had a miscarriage. I then had two boys back to back. And I found myself at a crux where I think a lot of women and everyone out there listening, maybe you've been there, we just hit rock bottom. And I was, was ready to do anything just to get healthy. But it was the greatest thing ever because from there I fell back in love with fitness. I fell in love with wellness. And to fast forward to the, today, I build a lot of my life around my workouts. Like just case in point, I have my workout scheduled here for my online coaching program. I will make sure, and Sandra can agree, we will always make sure we do our morning workouts because it sets the tone for the day. You're able to be more productive. So from my little humble beginnings of kind of just, you know, not knowing what to do in the fitness industry until me really just grabbing on to the horns and saying whatever it takes to get my strongest, healthiest, best. And I didn't want to be skinny. I wanted to be strong. And I think that's what really catapulted me. But also everyone listening and you, April and Sandra, I think you'll agree. It's really about mental power. When you're strong in your mind, it flows to your body and everyone out there listening, you know, it's a doggy dog world out there. What we did with the pandemic, with a lot of the other social um, unrest, you have to be really strong-minded, mind, body, and spirit. So I really urge everyone out there listening, make sure you put fitness first. Like case in point, we have a VIP client, a doctor flying in from Los Angeles or in the California area next week. We have, after this interview, we're going to go through and get a lot of listings together. But Sandra and I were already like, let's make sure we get our workouts in first. And then we go on these, the big long days around the magic city with our VIP client. So I, going back to your point and to wrap this up, I started out of nowhere, but that doesn't mean that you cannot achieve your goals. I'm here to tell you, to, to witness to everyone, that you can achieve anything when you put your mind to it and when you're really hungry for it. And also surround yourself like beautiful women like you, like angels, people that support you and want to see you doing well. So that's my answer. Yes. And I can only tune into this because fitness has been a big part of my life. Um, I have always worked out when I was younger I played a lot more tennis and I was horseback riding which I still am actually um, but you know fitness for me it doesn't matter where I am in the world where I'm traveling I always try to get a run in a workout in and it doesn't matter if it's mostly it's early early in the morning because that's as Jennifer said it's so clearly yeah. um, it sets the tone for the day it pumps up your metabolism makes you ready for the day um, but wherever I can get a workout in wherever I am in the world I am doing it so it just helps me balance myself uh, and helps me keeping fresh, active, energized. So I, I couldn't be without exercising. I'm not overdoing it anymore like I used to do it in my 20s, of course, but um, everything in moderation. And so that's very important in my life as well. And just an overall balance, right? Overall balance, yeah. Not one extreme or another, just very balanced. 
I think, I mean, there's even more than that. I've experienced with uh, meditation, yoga. I mean, there's a lot of components. And I think when we get older, uh, we're even, I mean, I've become even open to things that I wasn't early on. And so this has helped me a lot too. And I think the, you know, you get wiser and you understand more about the balance in your body and in your mind. So um, very important to keep this all together. You know, let's, we're actually going to jump over to an audience question because I think this, this actually goes right into what our questioning was anyway. This is for Jennifer. Jennifer, can you please tell us how important fitness is for someone for their health? both mentally and physically. Absolutely. Well, you have a pharmacy here from the neck up, and this is where you get your dopamine, your oxytocin, your serotonin, and your endorphins, or DOS for short. Not to sound too scientific, but if you want to boost your mood and feel like you have more mental clarity, you have more get up and go, you have more energy, you've got to work out. Now, people say, I'm not motivated. I don't want to work out. Of course, your brain is not wired to be motivated all the time. Um, but what do you do? You trick it. You actually just say, let me work out for 10 minutes. But as soon as that dopamine kicks in, because it really is a neurotransmitter and it's very powerful, you can't stop working out. You want to do more of it. You get that internal reward system. Also, I coach my clients something so simple as taking a pen and crossing off your workout gives you our inner reward system. It gives you a release of the dopamine. So I wanted to say it like this. You feel like you're getting high all day when you're doing your workouts. It's so important. So it, it really is one hand washes the other. Mind, body, and spirit, the trilogy. Great question. And to wrap up my point and to be succinct and effective and efficient, you have to work out if you want to feel good about yourself and if you want to also have positive energy exuding out because I don't care how great your marketing is, luxury real estate, the beauty industry, fitness, wellness, it's all a relationship. They're all built on relationships. And if you feel good about yourself, other people are gonna feel comfortable around you. And they're also gonna have that increased sense of well-being. You hate being around irritable people that are not balanced or not poised or polished or pulled together. So that, to answer my question, it is so important. I teach a lot of mental toughness and you, <laughs> You have to make yourself your own best friend. Don't create hell for yourself. Other people will do that. Just create the inner peace through mindful movement, like Sandra said, yoga, deep detox, stretching, positive affirmations, um, soul scripting, um, and letting go of things you can't control. Let go and let God and focus on what you can control. So those are some of my mental hacks that will help everyone get more, you know, reclaim their power in their life. Thank you. Jano. Sandra, tying that in, luxury real estate, you two are a team. How does fitness really kind of give, give this team an edge? How do you apply that in your teammanship and the way that you all operate in the luxury real estate space? Well, and I, I feel like, first of all, discipline is very important in this business, as well as in exercising. Again, I make it a point that I exercise religiously. It's just 60 minutes a day, but they're there. So it's, it's about like disciplining yourself. And that's the same thing with the work ethic in real estate. You know, you have to make sure you're, you, you do the right research, you stick to your appointments, you follow up with people. It's all, and in the end, all of this business evolves a lot around um, discipline. And at the same time, you know, you have to keep up your energy level because you, you, you have to always be motivating to, to your clients um, you know, to prospects, you have to be out there and, and market yourself. So for me, I have the most energy. Again, when I set my tone in the morning and exercise, my energy level starts off on a completely different kicker than it would if I wouldn't do this. So this, for me, it kind of ties in together. Again, the discipline, the energy, as well as motivation. Uh, in real estate, especially, I find there's a lot of self-motivation involved, as well as there's an exercise. Again, there's, there's a great out every single day. There would be an out for me. It might, be, it might be my kids. It might be my foot that's hurting or whatever, whatever. But I'm not, I'm not cheating on myself. I'm not cheating on myself. I'm not cheating on others. I'm not skipping a workout. So maybe if my foot hurts, maybe I'm not. Of course, I can't run. But I do something else. I do biceps curls, whatever. And so um, I feel the same way in business that 
cheat on people. I don't want to come up with excuses. Um, you with me, but honestly, you get what you see, what you get. I mean, you get what you see. So, uh, and I'm just trying to be true and honest to myself in my exercise, in my eating habits, and as well as in my professional life. And, you know, talking about the boost of an early morning workout, I know you both, I mean, you both are heavy with social media and streaming the workouts and the whole thing, but it really gives you such a boost that I think can, it, it does. I, I can speak from personal experience too. It carries you throughout the day. It's such a clean energy burn that's yeah. there yeah. all day. And, you know, also speaking on this, I'm sure both of you can relate to if there's ever a time where for some reason you miss a string of workouts, let's say you had an injury or you're out with you know, a cold or something like that. When you start back, it's harder to start back in, but once you get hit with those you know, natural chemicals that happen when you work out, it's, you know, it's that fuel it's, yes. you know, that carries you and you really, really can feel it. It really helps, I think, you know, stabilizing moods throughout the day, keeping you very calm throughout the day and you know, such a big proponent for this as well. And you two talking about living the message, do it day in and day out and a beautiful job. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's fun. It's been so much fun with Jennifer. So ever since she came into my life, you know, I kind of enriched my exercise routine. I mean, again, I always worked out and I experienced different forms of exercise. Um, but Jennifer came into my life as a fitness coach about a year ago. And uh, I so much enjoyed it. Uh, I mean, my yoga studio was closed and, you know, in the pandemic, everything was closed. So I started to appreciate online training and online workout. And, uh, you know, I know I realized I just went to Mexico last week and I really wasn't in the mood to just uh, go on the treadmill there in the gym. I put on my little JNL workout and it gave me also the kickstart start for the day there which was um super important and it's, it's a it's a great day and my point is really you can find you can make exercise fun and uh you know you just gotta experience different things and you know fit into well, it has to fit into your personality too so i think jennifer and i we are also yeah. um good friends and we motivate each other in exercise and sometimes of course i wake up and you know in the morning and i'm like oh my god i just everything hurts and i'm really not myself today but then i, I kick myself in the back yeah. and i i'm so much looking forward and i'm getting jolted as yes. jennifer calls it you know <laughs> starting my day. exercise routine with her so it's, yes. it's been really great experience I want to add 30 seconds to that real quick. You know, training Sandra Fiorenza, she is the German machine. I mean, she can train and train. She has that German DNA, very strong, and she's a lot of fun. And I'm really grateful. That's one thing. So back it up to your first question. How did the pandemic kind of, what was your greatest takeaway? I think I was able to find amazing relationships, like when just training with Sandra. And it wasn't like we tried to really be friends. The synergy was there. The chemistry was there. We crack each other up. And for everyone out there listening, kind of keep those people around you that you shine with and make you feel good. Like Sandra was saying, maybe you feel not so great in the morning, but when you get around other people, they give you that energy. It's better than a cup of coffee. So thank you, Sandra. The feeling is mutual. No, absolutely. Oh. Such a great dynamic duo you two are. Um, we have a question. Amy Dupree, I hope I didn't butcher your last name, Amy. This is to Sandra. And then take away over to Jennifer. How do you see the market in Miami? What's your what's your current update, Sandra? The market in Miami, I think it couldn't be any better. I mean, it has everything going for it. I mean, we have seen tremendous, yeah, in increases in prices. We have the lowest level of inventory, I think, ever. Um, but I think it's going to continue like this. We have uh, so many people that are, well, that might even want to come and can't come in the moment. I'm saying, I'm even talking about Europe or maybe certain countries in Latin America. This, I mean, the past year we have seen mostly our North or West American friends. So, and I think also the, these groups will still keep coming because we're not gonna, they're not gonna change the taxes in California or the wildfires. They're not gonna change the taxes in, in New York. And I think that because so many people 
I mean, if a CEO came down here to settle, now he's going to take all his company over here there. So now I think the commercial real estate is also going to have more, even more of an uptake because people want to put their entire companies here, not only themselves. And Miami has become not a vacation place or third home, second home market anymore, but it's really... Um, you know, a, a prime market now where people really want to live. It's really booming. I love to interject and to help answer that beautiful question. And great point, Sandra. Amy, you know, it's booming here. We're in boom season. There's cranes going up. There's, I mean, it's just, it's a seller's market. And they're just like Sandra said, there's no inventory. Um, New Yorkers, Chicago, California, everyone is scurrying here. But I love what Sandra said at the beginning. She said, I knew it was a hot city back in 1998. Now everyone is just seeing it. I feel the exact same way. When I moved to Miami, it was like the magic city. I found heaven on earth and um, it is booming and it's growing. At, and just with Waldorf Astoria now announcing its news, we were just at Aqualina Estates from Aqualina. They're growing. And I love to see Miami grow. And, and I just love to see that people get to experience the magic city. So great question. And about our city too, don't you think it did a great job with encompassing, you know, the, the sunshine, the water, you really can have an all things health and wellness lifestyle here. Yes. And my hotel there to, you know, to take. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. It yeah. I mean, especially for me, I've always been a fan of the sun not that I lay out but um anymore which I used in my 20s which I shouldn't probably have done but anyways I think the sun is really inspiring it's it's producing creativity and and people you know all of a sudden they come here and I think they especially when they come here in the winter months when it's snowing where they are or you know just like generally I think that the mood I see it in my in my own parents for example that are still in Germany so Germany it's the same thing you know they're like nine months of the year they're like in bad weather so they feel unmotivated they get sad and especially look what we have done during this pandemic coming back to my point that I made in the beginning I mean I dwelt right into real estate maybe the question was a little broader but um you know, people here in Miami, well, first of all, I think we had a really good governor that really allowed us to keep things more or less open. Um, and, and I think we have managed the pandemic extremely well, but it had to do with the fact that we do have an outside lifestyle here, that we can, you know, suck in the energy that's coming from nature, that's coming from the ocean, that's and coming I, from the sun. I'd love to chime in that it's such a beautiful melting pot of people from you know, it's Latin America, Europe, and even though we had the everything closed because of the pandemic, but you see just a vibrant, colorful lifestyle here. You can enjoy the beach, it's free. You can enjoy the weather all the time. And just like Sandra said, if you have seasonal disorder or you get kind of like the blues in the, in the weather, this is like the paradise. I fell in love with it when I first moved here and there's so much to offer, water sports. You can go to the Caribbean, a hop, skip and a jump away. And you can actually live where people want a vacation, which I really love. Yes. A lot to love about Florida, <laughs> that's for sure. Mm -hmm. Sandra, any any final words you want to add in on that subject? Uh, on Florida? <laughs> well, I welcome to Miami. Miami. No, I think, it, it, again, Miami is evolving from like a tourist place. And we do, I think there is still some work to be done in Miami, especially Miami Beach. Um, where we had <laughs> like some issues, but um, I think so moving it away from a tourist spot coming, I mean, you know, people are talking, you, you read, it, read it on the news every day, it's becoming the next tech hub here, which is really fascinating. I mean, we already have culture here. We have, you know, so much art here. I mean, uh, the, the Caribbean, like, like even Art Basel at Miami, Art Benward, everything that um, the city has to offer and the art world and uh, other cultural aspects here. Then we, of course, we have the most amazing restaurants. Now what happened, especially in the last six months, so many New York restaurants have come here. So, I mean, we are, we are just like, we are a full functioning super cosmopolitan city now that's on the same level as, um, I don't know, you know, Sydney or London, Monaco, anywhere, you know, you, you can really be on a very high, in, high intellectual luxury level in Miami. Which this was very different 
in 1998, you know, yeah. everybody thought it was a vacation place and maybe, you know, a place to go for spring break. And I think the image of Miami is just completely shifted. Very sophisticated. Very. Yes, a sophisticated colony. And so much ahead. Yeah. You know, I, I think it's, it's only going to get better and better here, which is very, very exciting. Mm -hmm. Jennifer. Definitely. Yes. Back over to you. We have an audience question okay. talking about, is it more beneficial to start your day working out in the morning? Is it different if, you know, a lot of people that work long hours, if they're in the gym in the evening, are there more benefits to switch that to the morning or doubling it as some people do too? Like Great question. And as a fitness expert, I love to just go straight to the answer, which is it's always beneficial to work out first thing in the morning for many reasons. Number one, you're burning stored calories. You're going deep into your glycogen stores and burning that stored fat. I love to do fasted workouts, but that's typical. Sandra eats breakfast. Everything is, you know, whatever works for you. But I really love working out in the morning. Why? Because like we said before, it sets the tone for the day. You're releasing your dose, dopamine, oxytocin, serotonin, endorphins. And you feel so much more agile. You feel mentally acute. You get rid of the mental jet lag and the fuzziness and the haziness and you're sharper and you're able to produce more. So for everyone out there telling yourself maybe that little white lie, oh, I don't have time to work out in the morning. Yes, you do. Go to bed earlier, wake up earlier, get that workout in in the morning and you're going to be your own best friend when you're fighting the war on fat. Why? Because you're going to be burning more fat all day long. As a fitness expert, I really love to go more towards um, repairing a broken metabolism than just saying, work out and eat this. Because if your metabolism is broken because maybe you hit middle age, maybe you're not eating enough superfoods, maybe you're under constant stress and your cortisol levels are straight up, maybe you're getting a little flabby and you're like, I want to get more muscle. You've got to work out in the morning. And the way I coach my clients at jnlvip.com is that you've got to repair a broken metabolism with superfoods also by working out first thing in the morning okay because what happens we all know this you're like i'll do it after work that never happens or if it does you're just pa, pa, pa. you're barely getting through the workout and you're like you know you should be roaring and ready to go in the morning so to answer that question always in the morning but i will say if you miss it in the morning because of an emergency make sure you still do that workout no matter what Thank you, Jennifer. You're welcome. And this is to both of you. What are your thoughts on intermittent fasting? I don't like it. I don't believe in fasting, but that's my personal opinion. I know there's a lot of people that believe in it and I think it's great. I've spoken to a lot of doctors about it. And honestly, everybody tells me that scientifically that your body eliminates the things that it's supposed to eliminate eventually anyways. Um, and again, I, I would say for, for me, I, I keep my body with fuel and I'm actually, I'm eating every two hours almost to keep my machine burning. So personally, I've never, I've never done a fast and I'm not a fan of it. But again, this is not to say there, and I know there's a lot of people that swear by it that, that think it's really, and it may, might have benefits for them. But I feel if I fast, you know, my, I have a problem anyways, that my sugar would just drop way too low and I would be, you know, I wouldn't be myself and I couldn't produce what I am producing. So I feel like I have to keep my machine burning. I mean, think of a Ferrari. I mean, if you, you know, you, you, you have to keep fueling it, right? If it's running out of fuel, it's not going anywhere. So this is how I kind of see it. You know, we're all, we're all made out of, you know, like electricity in, in the end too. So, you know what, if, if, you, if you stop it, it just stops and you're going to like burn down. I mean, that's again, but that's my perspective. Great answer. Yeah. Can I answer that? Yeah. 30 seconds. Um, I have a, I, a intermittent fasting. If you're like not eating too late, you have an early dinner and you don't eat until you wake up. That pretty much is intermittent fasting. So I think a lot of people have taken a word and they kind of made it trendy, but I have to agree with Sandra. I don't really necessarily, you know, fast, but I have an early dinner and I don't have carbs after four. And I prefer to do an empty uh, stomach workout. But again, that's, that's personal. Sandra eats before her workout, which is cool. Cause you can see her body. She is lean and 
that German machine is humming and burning off fat. So you have to really listen to yourself and see what works for you. But I do highly suggest that you don't eat late at night and you don't do a lot of heavy carbs at night. I do sweet potatoes, brown rice. Um, I do love my lean, clean and green food plan. And that really does help you to burn more fat. And to wrap this up, I love MCT oil. You know, Sandra had a great comparison of comparing your body to a fine-tuned sports car and not a 1970s bug where you're just putting mm -hmm. along. So the MCT oil is a superfood and it's gonna help you burn fat faster and also help with um, any metabolism repair that you need. Because if you've dieted before and you hit a certain age, your metabolism gets tired. So I'm always looking to jolt that. So if you're burning fat all day long, you can eat, I don't wanna say as much as you want, but you have a little more elbow room. And that's the approach I like to take it with my clients. So great answer question. That's a, that was a great answer, Sandra. And thank you so much for that question, April. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you, Sandra. Sandra, what, yes. what can you find in business that you won't find in wellness? And what can you find in wellness that you won't find in business? Well, I think, in wellness, we talked about balance before. And yes, one aspect about fitness, wellness, is like you're pushing yourself to the limit and it does feel good. Um, but I think like you also, you know, you have to like sometimes appreciate the moments and, you know, just step back. So whereas in business, I see, it seems like you always have to be on the go. So I think there is many more... <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm having a phone okay, call. Keep, yeah, keep talking. <laughs> I don't know. You guys, there you go. I'm so sorry again. My my internet is seriously out, which is unbelievable. But and that's why I'm on my phone here. So I don't even know how I look on this other side there. But Great. anyway, <laughs> I think it's just, you know, again in the wellness you get into a certain zone. And this makes it very enjoyable for me. And you really release a lot of endorphins. Whereas in business, uh, for the most part, you're always on a, like, a, like a stress level almost. I think like, uh, you know, for me, what exercise wellness is more like a, a stress level, re a stress releaser. Whereas, you know, of course in business, it's more like pumping you up and your stress level spikes during the day or when it comes to critical situation. So. All right. Thank you, Sandra. Jana. Yes. You know what? I feel like, you know, Confucius said, wherever you go, there you are. So uh, me being uh, a life coach, I always talk about positive mental attitude, PMA, wherever you go, you are. So I love to bring my wet wellness background and my love for creating my own inner peace into business. And I think that's what's going to help people have more longevity and they're going to enjoy doing it. Also, um, we all have to have a little bit of a Buddhist monk inside of us. What does that mean? You got to disattach. So when I'm coaching my clients and my online uh, a weight loss program and fitness program, I say, look, do the work, do your workouts, eat lean, clean and green, make it fun. It's, you're giving yourself the best gift ever. The results will come. Same thing with business. When you're doing a lot of luxury real estate and, and deals fall through, or they, you can't find the house that people want because you don't have a magic wand and there's like absolutely no inventory. <laughs> um, you cannot get stressed. You have to really kind of disattach from that and just do your best. So I feel like it goes hand in hand. Um, I've become that you know fitness lover where I love to work out and I love to take that positive energy into all my business dealings. And I think it makes the transactions go smoother less stress, more enjoyable. And then going back to Sandra, she's been doing this for, for over 20 years from since 1998. She's got such a, a, a plethora of great high quality contacts. And at the end of the day, like I said, people will remember not what you have, not what kind of home you live in or designer bag. They're gonna remember how you make them feel. So to wrap this point up, if you can find a really good fitness program that you can do that is sustainable, meaning you can do it four to six times a week, because you need to do a workout four to six times a week and eat healthy, fall back in love with eating healthy and drink water. You should always be asking yourself, where's my water? You're gonna just take that energy into everything you touch and everything you touch will turn into VIP gold. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jennifer. Sandra, any, any final thoughts you wanna add in there? Um, not really. <laughs> Wait, to the last question you're saying? Yes. Or
Oh, this is this a cut? Are we finished? <laughs> no. Um, no, I think Jennifer really summed it up. I mean, I understood the question more like what's what you can find at one point and you can't find any other. So I tried to make a little difference, but at the same time, you know, I think more more goes hand in hand, you know, like yeah, you, you know, you want to be energized. It's all about energy. So exercising is energizing as well as working is energizing for me. I, I feel like, I mean, people have this, you know, a lot of older generation, people have this great image in their head, like, oh, I want to retire. You know, this is for me. For me, this is like really something that sounds horrible, really horrible. And anybody that uses the word, I'm like, wow, you like, you don't, you don't want to live anymore, kind of, you know, what are you, what are you about? Like people that, you know, once you lose your energy to produce, once you lose your challenges, um, then I, I think, you know, then, then you lose a successful life. So I think it's, uh, again, it's all about energy and keeping your energy up and keeping your motivation up um, in all aspects of your life. But having balance. <laughs> and one really feeds the other which I found, and I know you two live that way too. Yeah, yeah. Let's talk about synergy. Yeah. Back to you, Jennifer. Why do you think synergy is so important in wellness, business, and you know, looking at this great team here today and finding the right business partner? Absolutely, synergy is there and chemistry is there. And it's great when you have that kind of natural energy that you don't really try to force. And, and I'm grateful to God that um, I found that with Sandra, we really have a great time. And it wasn't like we were even looking for, you know, a real estate business partner. It was just from us training together and talking. We see eye to eye on a lot of great things. I have a great amount of respect for her. And I feel like that's important. Now, synergy is this. It's not one plus one equals two. It's one plus one equals a thousand. So one or two people coming together and they create like this force field. That's very important as an online coach and, and working on different projects and productions and marketing, doing HSN, QVC, QVC London, you name it. I've done it infomercials. I've had to really kind of take on a hat of being a team player. It wasn't about me. It's like, how can I serve the team? So everyone listening out there, no matter what you're doing, like your real estate, fitness, wellness, a uh, branding, marketing, you got to really be that solid team member and team player and always serve, serve the team. And that's how you create synergy. You get out of yourself and you create a better environment for everyone to work in. And you're actually more productive and you're actually able to produce more. Right. And I think that also goes back to being, you know, effective and efficient and getting a lot more done. Minimum work, getting maximum results, which I love to see. So that's really synergy. And, you know, sometimes you want to create it with someone. It does. It's not there. Sometimes you naturally find it, which is great. And that's why I feel like, you know, we're really excited about our luxury real estate career together and all the great things that are happening. And really the sky is the limit. So everyone out there listening, whenever you find someone or a team of people you really gel with, you connect with, keep them close because I really call them angels. When you believe in angels, they appear. And April, I know you, you do a lot of marketing. You do a lot of business meetings. You're like pulling a lot of strings behind the curtain. So I know you have to create that synergy as well. So you can get more done for the brand, for the movement, for the, for, um, the team. So that's my, my answer on synergy and why it's important. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm, I work very well with people. I'm not so good working by myself, I have to say. And I think it is, you know, this synergy aspect that you kind of want to, you know, to have somebody that empowers you, that complements you, that, um, you know, Jennifer and I, I mean, we have so many things that are in common. She feels like a sister from a different mother. But at the same time, she has different assets than I have. Um, definitely as this talk shows. <laughs> <laughs> and then, you know, promoting, marketing. And she has been on in the business of, um, yeah, for such a long time. I've been dealing with high net worth individuals for a long time. So I think... You know, both of our backgrounds, but yet the thing is also about fun. So, you know, I want to be, I always want to work with somebody that's fun, um, that, you know, that I can trust. So, I mean, if these two things are there, the fun, the trust, and the same ambition, of course, and the same values, effective on life, I mean, that's a perfect synergy. Absolutely. Yeah. Great, great answer. Yes. Sandra, thank you. 
Jay and I'll back over to you. What are some empowering questions that our listeners can ask themselves to develop a mind of wellness and just a, a better sense of, of overall well-being? Absolutely. You know, the universe is our greatest mirror. It's going to give us all the answers back that we need. So at the end of the day, if a deal fell through or you felt like you didn't get as much done or you weren't as productive or you were always being distracted and you didn't keep your eye on the prize or something that just went wrong, I always have my clients that I coach ask yourself, what can I do better? What did I learn from this? There's no such thing as failure. Failure really is just knowing what to do better next time. So instead of asking yourself disempowering questions like, why did this go sideways? Why did that person stab me in the back? Why did she say a shady comment? Maybe you can say, how can I keep my inner circle a little bit more pristine that when I'm around them, they may feel better? Or how can I be more effective and efficient to make sure that deals don't fall through? How can I get more done? So when you ask yourself empowering questions that you're going to get great answers back. So you can streamline your success. You can feel great about your stuff. At the end of the day, you don't look in the mirror and you're like, oh my God, I look so frazzled and haggard and just exhausted. And I don't want to do this again tomorrow. You're actually poised, polished, pulled together and you love what you do and you love creating these winning moments. You know, I always say, people say, oh, you're a life coach or you do luxury real estate. No, I create winning moments for people in life to celebrate. You know, closing on your home, losing five pounds, having more energy, not snapping at your kids, loving your husband more. These things are all what really people want. And that's what is important. So always ask yourself empowering questions like, what did I learn? How can I be better? And how can I actually work less and actually achieve more? Okay. So when you ask these empowering questions, you're going to find really great answers. And it's specific to everyone. It's individual. What works for me and not necessarily going to work for everyone out there. So, you know, build that relationship with yourself a little bit more and ask empowering questions, not bad questions. Yeah, I love that. Love it. Sandra, right. anything you want to add? Yeah, I think uh, questions, yes. My, my, I mean, I, I can tune in a little bit to what Jennifer said. I think I always try to, you know, see what can I learn from it? What kind of lesson can I take from this? Uh, but also at the same time, not dig, I try not to dig too much in the past. And uh, I mean, sometimes I feel like we're asking too many questions or I do for my part. So I get, um, I get sidetracked, very uh, backtracked way too much. And then this, this doesn't work anymore. So I think one of the things is also very important to be not, not to be resentful, not to regret something that happened that you did. But just like always say, hey, what what's what's the, the future offers a, a bright light yeah. and you know get into the the next moment, just shift the moment, get into yeah. the next moment, uh, suck, it, suck in the energy yeah. uh, from what's coming and not what's behind you. Just take the lesson and then move on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank awesome. you, Sandra. Jennifer, yes. yes, one word, and I want to pose this to each of you one word that sums up your approach to business fitness and wellness Woo. jolted i'm jolted okay so i went from being jaded and, and miserable and had that transformation of being jolted and that means having energy pep in your step positive expectations setting your intentions for a positive outcome did you know that when you have a positive intention you set it for 10 to 15 seconds that's worth like a, a year of, of man hours working. So I always say have that jolted lifestyle, meaning you're excited, you have that positive energy. And like Sandra said, you know, shift it. You have that powerful shift. How do you know you've been jolted? You have your alarm at 6.30, but you're waking up at five, so excited to start the day. Um, how do you know you're still writing that proposal or working on that special project hours after you should have wrapped up because you're in the passionate moment of creating? So I want everyone to fall back in love with working. Working is good. Be grateful you have a job. Be grateful you have deals coming your way. Don't let it overwhelm you. Let it jolt you and that your cup runneth over. So it's an abundance life. It's a colorful life. And to wrap it up, it's a life of get up and go, pizzazz, energy. And you have that zest for life. Because I hate being around people that are like a dead fish on a slab. I just can't stand it. <laughs> 
I'm just saying, I need to be around creative people like on your team at Hope, like Sandra Fiorenza. She is so much fun. So life is short, have fun and live the jolted life. So that's my word. Wow. So I, I forgot what I was going to say now. That's for sure. Because that was long <laughs> um, anyways, I'm, I'm, I'm a woman of shorter words. So I'm just going to say, yes, definitely. I'm repeating myself. It's discipline. It's motivation. Staying focused. Being in awareness. Um, anticipating things. So, you know, just uh, just be fully in the moment and be, 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 be fully there be concentrated, be disciplined, stay motivated, and then yeah. try to live out your passion. Beautiful. Okay. Very good, passionate, yes. You're two very passionate ladies. <laughs> and you know, going back over to your teammanship yeah. and, and back over to what really separates you out there in the luxury real estate market, in one sentence, why this team? Sandra, do you want to start or do you want me to start? Sorry, I didn't get the last part of the sentence. Sure. In one sentence, why this team? Meaning you two. Why, you know, why should someone come to, to each of oh. you, to this team to work together with in one sentence? I would love well, to start with that. Go ahead, Sandra. Yeah, you go ahead. <laughs> no, I mean, no, who wouldn't want to work with us? You know, we're a great team. There's so much fun, first of all. I have a board of experience, you know, I'm like um, a dinosaur. So <laughs> and, uh, we are, we're so much fun, you know, I mean, who doesn't want to work with somebody that's fun, but, and, and also somebody that has integrity. And yeah. again, we complement each other, Jennifer and I, we complement yes. each other. So, and this is what it's about. And then, you know, we can cover up for each other too. One person, I mean, there's always, you know, we can't always be together at the same time somewhere or I can't always be anywhere, my, everywhere myself. So we just like complement each other. And I think that's that's what, um, you know, a partnership is for. But then also being super transparent and being good friends. Otherwise it doesn't really work. Right. So you want, you know, you always have to have in the back of your mind, okay, I'm working with this person. I'm not, you know, she's not my competitor or something. So, um, and again, you know, a team is always, it's, it's a lot of fun and we want to bring, fun to people and we want to bring yeah well I, I say my, my my life experience um and my experience in the real estate market so great answer and I'd love to add also why you should come to us number one with our combined you know 40 years of experience marketing serving others me as a life coach being in the fitness and wellness industry serving others and Sandra with luxury real estate we offer so much and also trustworthiness. We have a reputation in our different demographics. Me as a life coach, as, as an author of 17 books, you know, you, you can trust us with your greatest assets, your properties, real estate. There's a lot of shady people here in this sunny place of Miami. I hate to say it, not throwing shade, but there, I see a lot of real estate agents that are not even licensed. They don't have license. They're not even, you know, registered with the board and they're doing real estate deals. And I'm just like, pretty soon the whistle will be blown on them. So you can trust us. We are very professional. Me as a life coach, I've taken my word as gold. If you tell me something in confidentiality, it's not going to be gossiped down to someone in the office. I don't go down that very low, bright, vibrational drama route of gossiping. And people, Sandra can attest to this. We have conversations about this. Your best friend on your team will stab you in the back to get a bigger commission or bigger check. We don't need to do that. We are here honest, loyal, hardworking. We love what we do. And we have so much to offer on our team and also the team you don't see behind the scenes with our 990 offices around the world, 27,000 other members with One Sotheby's. And so I'm very honored to say that I have a great team member and she's very hardworking, professional, loyal, and she has never done anything dirty that I see in the industry to say, just being upfront. And I'm excited about the future. And if anyone out there, we are here to help you with your luxury real estate needs, please contact us. Definitely, yes. And I might tune in that, you know, honestly, I've, I've, I've been living the luxury lifestyle for so many years and I've lived in so many different places in the world. So I do understand international clients I do understand lifestyle I kind of think that I know what the really the, the high net worth individual really wants 
when they're searching for properties or you know other lifestyle consultations. Good. Thank you, Sandra. Thank you. And you know we're we're closing out a whole hour together. Any final thoughts and final words? Starting with you, Jana. Like how how can we all stay motivated? Oh, great question. First of all, I want to say thank you to April Donison. You were the hostess with the mostest great moderator, great questions, and also April, thank you. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Thank also, you. I mean, I see you with the events and the private dinners with Hope Living, and also to everyone at Hope Living. I want to thank Kamal, Seth, all the people that make the magic work with this publication. You guys are amazing. And also to my co-panelists, Sandra Fiorenza, you never cease to amaze me. And this is just the beginning. So many years of success ahead. How do you stay motivated? You got to really kind of evoke your pain. Why did you start wanting to kick butt and take life by the horns? Remember that moment. It was a transitional moment in your energy and your spiritual DNA. For me, I keep my before photo there. It reminds me of where I came and why, and looking at all my successes and accomplishments and measuring that. You cannot achieve more unless you're able to me measure what you've already accomplished. Also, the most secret thing of the universe is being grateful. When you have another day, which a lot of people didn't get with COVID and everything, a lot of people are facing death or they've been sick, use today. It's a blasphemy not to make every second count. So you have to be self-motivated. Sandra likes to call it discipline. I like to say it's self-motivation. No one's going to get you up. No one's going to do your hair and makeup. You got to do it yourself. You got to get up, wake up, show up, kick butt. And most importantly, mm -hmm. never give up if you want to be a top producer and make your name ring out in the industry and have people say good things about you. So that's how you stay motivated. So when you look in the mirror at night or in the morning, you can say, you're a winner. I'm proud of how hard you push yourself. Not because you have to. Let's be honest. I'm going to say it as it is. Sandra doesn't have to work. I, I'm, I thank you, God, I'm comfortable, but we love what we do. And that's why we really love to live in passion and to serve others and to make, you know, huge success breakthroughs happen. That's why it's important to be motivated. And that's how you get motivated and stay motivated. Thank you so much. Beautiful. That, Jennifer, really awesome. And again, I can only tune in here, but uh, you know, I think it's all about wanting to but looking forward always to something and knowing that there is always more out there, things that are inspirational that you can look forward to. Um, I think that's adding value, you know, for me, it's all about the older that honestly, I see uh, my life goal is, since I've already been a lot of places, done a lot of things, I just want to add value to this world, to humanity, to my children, first and foremost, of course, so, um, and that keeps me really motivated, you know, that I see every, every day as a new opportunity. And uh, that's what makes me want to strive more. And I'm, I'm the worst, I'm my own worst critic, I can say, because I am criticizing myself and I'm always, you know, evaluating I'm going to do the right choices. So, um, but it, it, at the same time, it keeps a tracker on myself and it keeps me motivated. Right. But again, Thank you, Jen, for what you just said, and I want to tune this in again, and I want to say it again. It's awesome. Thank you so much for this little webinar here, and April, you're really a rock star. You, you have taken the magazine to, to an amazing, amazing level, and uh, it, it's just it's a beautiful thing, and how you bring people together, and you know, I, I feel very blessed to be part of this community, and I feel so blessed to have Jennifer as my partner. Me too, yes. So, Beautiful. <laughs> and I want to say thank you to everyone that tuned in. And if we empowered you in any way, thank you so much. And we really are here to serve you. Please reach out to us in any way. And again, thank you, April. Well, let thank you. Thank you to Jennifer. Thank you to Sandra. And let's go through how did how do people get in touch with you? Starting with you, Jennifer. Oh, sure. They can reach out. If you reach out to me, it's like reaching out to Sandra. So you can reach out to my website, jnlvipre.com or 786 516-6636. And we'll give our information below where you can send an email to jlee at one Sotheby's realty.com. And again, anything that comes through me, it's like our team for Sandra. But Sandra, I'm sure you'd like to give your information as well. So yeah, of course. I don't know if everybody is ready to write down my number, 305-281-4727, or my email, sandra at fiorenza.cc. 
The easiest, you know what, is Instagram. Yeah. Sandra Fiorenza one. Keep it in mind. Sandra Fiorenza one. And exactly, every lead comes to me, goes to Jennifer as well. We are partners. We have synergy, and we motivate everybody that comes to us. Such a great team. Thank you both for such a great hour with us and for speaking with you know Hope Living, Hope Residents, and Hope Beauty. Um, we're sure proud to have each of you as our partners. Thank you, April. Thank you, thank you everyone. Thank and thank you, you Sandra. Everybody. Amazing interview. <laughs> God bless you all. Awesome. Looking forward to seeing both of you soon. Thank you, guys. Have a great day. Bye. You thank too. You. God bless. Bye.